Hi there and welcome back to Kim's Tips and Tricks. Uh, I had a lot of questions since my last tutorial about the working of the heel on the Addy. And so I'm gonna make another sock, but this one is gonna be a complete sock. And we're gonna make a reinforced heel and a reinforced toe. So not the pull together toe, but an ordinary normal toe. So uh, and, and I'm also going to work with wool, or mostly wool. I made a test run, and this is 70% wool, 30% uh, poly polyamide. I don't know how to pronounce it, but and it's very hard to work with, especially on the Addy. If you're knitting by hand, it's not an issue, but it doesn't stretch. It tangles a lot, and it like adhesive to each other all the the threads get stuck into each other so I'm, I'm gonna make it as difficult as possible to, to let you know how how to solve this so uh, I'm gonna give you a close-up on the on the toe I tried to uh, sew it together with the kitchen estate stitch, stitches but I'm, I'm not a I'm not an expert in this. Actually, it's the first try I ever did. So, if there's anyone out there who can teach me to do it uh, when the fabric is reversed, I would be very grateful for all, all the help you can give. And I had a lot of questions, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> about uh, the slipper sock I made in this fluffy yarn. Uh, it's a yarn from Turkey, uh, it's, uh, the brand is Ice, uh, many of you probably heard of it. It's just an ordinary sock, made on the Addy 22 needle and with a, brim, uh, with a normal brim, like if you would uh, start doing a hat, and I just fold it over. Uh, this yarn makes, makes the sock very big. And especially if you don't put tension on it, like I did. I didn't put any tension whatsoever because I was going to try out the yarn first. Uh, the yarn is in itself very thin. Uh, here. It's just a very, very thin, I don't know if you can see it, very thin thread, like sewing thread and a lot of hairs on it. Uh, so I tried first without putting tension on it because uh, I didn't know how much Oh, sorry, that's my dog. That's my dog again. <laughs> I didn't know if it was gonna break if I put too much tension on it. So I just made a big, a very big sock. And it functions as a slipper at the same time. So, try it. I made this one with the pull together toe and that works when you have a fluffy yarn like this or a very big uh, sock. My dog keeps uh, nagging the hitting the the tripod <laughs> sorry um, then it's gonna become very big but that's up to you I, I tried again I, I fortunately I gave it away I, I made another pair and I put a lot of tension on it and it just became a normal ordinary sock so the yarn itself and the quality and the thickness does a lot to the finished project, especially working on the Addis. You can always uh, uh, change it with normal, ordinary needles and, and use another needle, another size and, and get the result you want. You're a little restricted with the Addy, but that's part of the fun. I like to find out which yarns works and which doesn't. I can tell you that this one is very tough. The more wool, uh, the harder it gets, and especially if they don't mix it with acrylic, but polyamide in this case, but polyamide is not smooth at all. So, um, my recommendation is if you're gonna make socks and you're not 100% sure about how to make the heel and sock, try uh, either a pure acrylic uh, worsted weight yarn or a wool with acrylic in it and no polyamide because it's really difficult but I'm gonna show you guys and you're gonna follow me through the whole process and I'm gonna show you how to make the toe so I'll be right back
I wanted to show you this toe from close up. Hope you can see it. I um, I tried a kitchen stitch, but like you say, I'm not an expert in this. But I, what what I wanted to show you was if you use the same method on the toe like you did on the heel, you will create this round, nice end of the sock, and it will sit or fit much better on on the foot uh, and be more comfortable than the pull together. So in the principle is just the same. You start with a heel, but at the end of the of the sock and you have to uh, take away the number of rows you need by five depending on yarn this is pretty thin yarn but still I had to I had to take away five st five rows to finish uh, the sock to make it the length that I need for my feet so let's get started. I put on a couple of rows of waist yarn because I want to make a ribbon on mine. Uh, when I walk a lot in boots uh, this time of year, and it just makes them stay on your foot better with a little piece of ribbing. So I cast it on so I can pick up those stitches and make a ribbing when I'm done. So I'm gonna make 20 rows for my wrist and then we're gonna start on the heel. So we will grab our second ball of yarn and cut up six stitches like I explained in the other video. I had a uh, couple asking about dropped stitches on the seventh needle. To prevent that you don't go all the way up to the sixth needle, you stop right in front of it and you wrap the yarn around it. That's one way. Or you just have to pick them up. Uh, at the net when you start to go in around but the easiest way to avoid this and not have holes in your heel is just to stop in front of the sixth needle and you will repeat that all the way down to the second needle just stop in front of the one you're gonna decrease or increase it makes it a little snug when you do that but I wanted to show you for, for the ones who, who couldn't figure this out use quite a lot of uh, yarn uh, I don't know in inches but like 20 centimeters so you have something to sew in and put it across the old working yarn so that they cross each other under the needle when we go back next round the new round the new stitch will att attach them to each other and two fingers, put tension on the new thread and put tension on the old thread and go back. Two, three, four, five in front of the sixth needle. You take the next ball of yarn and again 20 centimeters put it in, take the old yarn out and when you wrap it over 
it's gonna make a cross and attach to each other and again tension and go back I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can see once again how I do this Again, oh, camera is very close by now. I, I, I tried to make it put the camera so that you see it from my point of view. Crossing the yarn, the new one over the old one, put the new one in, and I said this to one of my viewers pick up the new thread with your right hand. So the left thread with your right hand, and the right thread with your left hand. Then you can't do it wrong. So you see that crossing? put tension on it and like I said this is wool so it doesn't quite follow along with the needles it's also quite thin so it gets a little stuck in the feeder and again I'm stopping right in front of the needle I'm gonna decrease again new yarn in old yarn out and tension and go back again I'm more or less stopping between the needle I'm gonna work with and the next one that way you can't lose any stitches so new yarn in old yarn out and like I said it's pretty thin this yarn so doesn't really want to work along but I wanted to show you tension let that one go and go back and as you can hear the machine has to to work because it's not stretching this yarn not whatsoever and it's a little rough these socks are meant to be worn uh, on top of ordinary cotton socks or and this is also an issue if you have thin yarn that it's jumping out and skipping stitches so you have to be vigilant using this kind of yarn it's a little more work but like I said for me it's a challenge to try out as many types of yarn that I can to find out what works and what doesn't and and how you have to adapt to make new yarns work I'm an explorer I guess that's part of my ADHD always uh, searching for a challenge to stay vigilant to stay alive and and keep my interest in stuff I guess I don't know. I don't have an explanation for it. But uh, I always been like this, and this is what makes me learn. I guess I I had these addies for two months, and I figured out quite a lot in that time just by being very stubborn, very tenacious. I rarely give up. If I decide I'm gonna learn something, I'm gonna learn it, no matter how painstaking it is so now I decreased all my needles I'm back to needle number two and two so now we're gonna increase so we pass the needle and go around it and I can see this is getting confusing because now the thread is not going over uh, the working thread like it does when you decrease but that's okay because in the next round the next uh, stitch is gonna lock that one the most important is that they're not going along each other but crossing each other in one way or, or the other that's the key so again 
increasing in with the new out with the old and going back you have to go very very slowly with this yarn it's uh, it's hard to work with but Why not? Oh, there we go again. In with the new, out with the old. And go back. Oh. But as you can see, even if if it's tough yarn, it, it still works. You just have to be a little more careful and pay attention to to the tension uh, on your thread. Let's see, that's a black one, two, three, four, five. Talking too much, so I'm losing count. Have to tell me if I'm talking too much during my videos. I'm still pretty new at this. So. And I'm creating a yarn mess, but like I said, that's okay. One, two, three, four. In with the new, out with the old. Just like decorating for Christmas, right? Which I haven't done because I've been busy with this all winter and uh, taking on a lot of uh, orders. Uh, for people and friends and family and so sixth needle last one here and in the beginning I uh, I don't know how but sometimes I seem to miss out on one needle it's like I'm going one needle short on one side and that's okay it, it doesn't matter that much it's still gonna become a heel and it's still gonna fit perfectly so don't worry so much about it if you have six on one side and five on the other it will still work out it will still fit perfectly so I have a little yarn mess here but like I said this yarn is tangling a lot I'm gonna solve this and get back to you All right, tangle is resolved. Like I said, it's a uh, woolly yarn. It's pretty hard to work with, but it is doable. And uh, that's what I kind of wanted to show you guys. That's, it doesn't depend on the yarn. It's all about just taking it easy, relax. It's supposed to be fun to do this. It's not supposed to be painstaking uh, adventure it's gonna be socks so let's see and now I'm back to my original thread now it tangled again I'm sorry <laughs> so I'm just gonna change these two I'm at the sixth needle because I don't have much yarn left on the that little ball I made so I'll just make an extra here I'm gonna cut this off and I will need 30 rounds I rarely count the first one here because you never know if you have a drop stitch or anything so I go one around just to check that everything is in place I don't count count that row so 30 rows and I'll get back to you when I start on the toe so 
So we come to the toe part. We back at the black needles and since I want to have a round toe and not the square one, uh, we're go just going to use five white needles and not six as we do on the heel because the foot is always wider by the heel than by the toe mostly. If you have a very big foot and very wide up just use six stitches. I use five to create this round toe and normally I guess when you make a toe by hand you use less stitches, you decrease when you closing up to the toe. Uh, I've been cutting around in this yarn, I've been making different yarn balls just to catch up with the with the color I saw when I was done I managed to get yellow in my heel and yellow in my toe so I try to do the same on the second one it's not easy so let's see that's one two three four five so on the outside of the fifth needle take the old yarn out cross it over hold it with two fingers and go back One, two, three, four, five. I'm stopping just in front of the fifth needle. Excuse me. <coughs> Having a cold coming on. That's no good. Let's see, where did I do? What did I do with my yarn? It's here somewhere. So on the outside of the fifth needle, bring it in, take the whole yarn back out and fold it over and go back and once that one is attached you can just let this go and concentrate on putting tension on your working yarn and you will need to do that especially with with this woolly yarn again I'm stopping in front of the needle just in front of it I'm not on a diagonal basis of it I'm just stopping before I it meets up with a yarn feeder. In with the new yarn, out with the old, wrap it around the needle and go back. New yarn in, old yarn out, and go back. And just as you do with the heel, you're gonna stop at needle number two and start to increase again. Oops. See, I lost the thread. It broke. No, I made it. Now I guess I dropped something here. No. Oh, yay, lucky me, it didn't fall off. Sometimes you're lucky, I don't know. It's like these machines sometimes have their own life. Somehow. Second needle. This yarn is tough to work with. You have to go very, very slow. So I wouldn't recommend making woolly socks with this thin wool polyamide yarn to anyone in your family or for Christmas because it's gonna take forever. So and now we're gonna increase, so you're stopping in front of the third needle. And again, crossing the yarn. And going back. It's 
splitting the yarn. <coughs> You see here there's a mess everywhere. It's uh it's just the way it is. I'm gonna try to invent some kind of thing to hold the threads. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So last one on this side. If I come up with a good solution I'm gonna share with you. Because this is uh I really don't understand when they when they made these machines why they didn't make a stick up here with a yarn feeder or something to keep the yarn going over the machine like you do on other knitting machines that would be the most logical I guess so. last needle Now I'm just gonna go around once to sort of bind off these connections in the edges of the heel. I'm back where I started. I'm gonna put on some waist yarn because I wanna try and stitch it up. I'm gonna make my second attempt to do a kitchener stitch on the toe. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it, the fitting, the yarn. Um, so I can use it for stitching up the toe. So that's it. That's how I make them. It's uh, like I said, when 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 you know how to do it, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, and when you use yarn that isn't struggling like this is, I mean, if you use acrylic or any other type of yarn except for wool, it will work perfectly. It will be very very easy after a while. I'm gonna take this off and show you how this is turning out. So that's the reinforced heel. There's a tiny hole there and that's where the crank is and I obviously dropped the stitch but that's okay I can pick it up. And the toe is gonna look a little funny before you stitch it up but you just fold it up and sew it together with a kitchener stitch and you will create this round nice toe and that's it I hope this has helped a little uh, and solved some of the questions you had since my last tutorial if there's any questions again like always send me a, a message and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can and uh, for more tutorials and tips and tricks please subscribe to my channel put a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing and uh, thank you bye